In this part, we will continue presenting and discussing some definitions of factors which characterize the loads. In this lecture, we will cover the coincidence factor or what is also called simultaneity factor. Then, we will define the contribution factor. Then the loss factor. And at the end, we will summarize this first section about definitions. Let's define what's a coincidence or simultaneity factor. It is defined as the ratio of the maximum coincident total demand of a group of consumers to the sum of the maximum power demands of individual consumers comprising the group, both taken at the same point of supply and for the same time. So, the coincidence factor is calculated using this equation. Note that the coincidence factor is actually the inverse of the demand factor. Standards such as the IEC have defined some standard coincidence factor values for a distribution switchboard, which can be used by designers when they conduct a load study. This table lists some of these values depending on the number of circuits. IEC classifies assemblies into type-tested assemblies and partially type-tested assemblies. Type-tested assemblies conforming to an established type or system without deviations likely to significantly influence the performance, from the typical assembly verified to be in accordance with the standard. In this case, a full range of representative configurations have been tested. On the other hand, partially type-tested assemblies, containing both type-tested and non-type-tested arrangements provided that the latter are derived, for example by calculation, from type-tested arrangements which have complied with the relevant tests. In this case, some limited configurations may be tested. The fully tested assemblies are more trusted in their ratings, and therefore, coincidence factor values below 1 can be considered, while those partially tested, may not be fully trusted in their ratings, and therefore, it is recommended to take a unity coincidence factor, which means also unity diversity factor, and hence, diversity in the load shall not be considered in this case. According to this table, for assemblies entirely tested with two and three circuits, the standard coincidence factor is 0 0.9. For 4 and 5 circuits, the coincidence factor is 0.8. For 6 and 9 circuits, the coincidence factor is 0.7. And for more than 10, it is equal to 0.6. For assemblies partially tested, in every case we choose the coincidence factor as unity. Notice that the larger the number of circuits, the lower is the coincidence factor. IEC standards provide us low coincidence factor values for apartment blocks with different number of apartments. Let's consider an example, which will explain how we can calculate some of the previously introduced load factors. In this example, assume that there are two primary feeders supplied by one of the three transformers located at a distribution substation, as shown in the figure. One of the feeders, supplies an industrial load. The other one, feeds residential loads. The first feeder supplies an industrial load that occurs primarily between 5 a.m. and 11 p.m., with a peak of 2000 kilowatts at 5 p.m. The second one feeds residential loads that occur mainly between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m., with a peak of 2000 kilowatts at 9 p.m. And, the total system load peak is 3000 kilowatts and occurs around 7 p.m. Summing the two loads, leads to the total transformer load curve, shown in the figure, 
with a maximum of 3000 kilowatts, occurring at 7 pm. We need to determine the followings. The diversity factor of the load connected to the transformer. The load diversity of, the load connected to the transformer. The coincidence or simultaneity factor, of the load connected to the transformer. To solve this example, we start by answering the first question about the diversity factor calculation. Since we have two similar peak loads, industrial and residential, of 2000 kW each, and a total non-coincident load of 3000 kW, we can find the diversity factor by applying its equation as shown here. This yields a diversity factor of 1.33. For the second question, we need to determine the load diversity, which is calculated using this equation. Thus, the load diversity is 1000 kW. Finally, for the last question, the coincidence factor of the load is determined using this equation which is the inverse of the diversity factor. So, in this case, the coincidence factor is 0.75. Now, let's define another factor, which is the contribution factor of an individual load I. It is denoted by CI. CI is the contribution factor of the ith load to the group maximum demand. It is given in per unit of the individual maximum demand of the ith load. CI is calculated using this equation. So, it is the ratio of the class demand, at time of system peak, to the class non-coincident maximum demand. So, we can write that, the total maximum non-coincident or diversified demand DG, equals the sum of, contribution factor of load I, times maximum demand of load I, for I equals 1 to N. Which is equivalent to write the coincidence factor FC, as the ratio of the sum of the individual demand, multiplied by, its contribution factor, to the sum of the total maximum non-coincident demand. Considering the previous example, the coincidence factor can be calculated, based on this equation as follows. Note that, we have obtained the same value we've calculated previously, using the diversity factor equation. Using this equation of the coincidence factor as a function of classes contribution factors. Two special cases can be considered. In case 1, we consider all the demands are equal, which leads to this expression, where the coincidence factor is equal to the average contribution factor. In case 2, we consider that all contribution factors are equal. This leads to the having the coincidence factor equal to the contribution factor. Let's again consider an example that will explain better how these factors are calculated from the load characteristics. In this example, we need to use the load curve data given in this table to determine the followings. The class contribution factors for each of the three load classes. The diversity factor for the primary feeder. The coincidence factor of the load group. The coincidence factor of the load group. Noting that, the peak occurs at 5 pm. Let's calculate those factors one by one in the following slides. The class contribution factor is defined by this equation. For the street lighting, the class demand at time of system peak is 0 kW. The street lighting maximum demand is 100 kW. Hence, the street lighting contribution factor is 0. For the residential load, the class demand at time of system peak is 600 kW while its maximum demand is 1000 kW. Hence, the residential load contribution factor is 0.6. For the commercial load, 
the class demand at time of system peak is 1200 kilowatts which is also the maximum demand. Hence, we get a unity commercial load contribution factor. Next, let's find the diversity factor which is calculated with this equation. We use the previously calculated class contribution factors and we can be found the value of the diversity factor equal to 1.278. Now, the diversified maximum demand of the group is determined as, the coincident maximum demand of the group. That is DG equals the sum of the product of the class contribution factor and its maximum demand, for the three classes. Which yields DG equals 1800 kilowatts. Next factor to study is the loss factor. It is the ratio of the average power loss to, the peak load power loss, during a specified period of time. Note that, this equation is applicable only for the copper losses of the system, but not for the iron losses. Let's me explain the use of the loss factor through the following example. Let's consider that the annual peak load, of a primary feeder is 2000 kilowatts, at which, the power loss, that is total copper or sum of I square R loss, is 80 kilowatts per three phases. Assuming an annual loss factor of 0.15, we want to determine the average annual power loss. The total annual energy loss, due to the copper losses, of the feeder circuits. We know that, the loss factor is actually, the ratio of the average power loss, to the power loss at peak load, and in this case, it is given and is equal to 0.15. Knowing that the power loss at peak load is 80 kilowatts, we can determine the average power loss as shown here. So, the average power loss in this case is 12 kilowatts. Now, the total annual energy loss is calculated by multiplying, the calculated average power loss, by the total number of hours per year, which is 8760 hours. So, the total annual energy is 105,120 kilowatt hour. Let's see another example, where we assume that, feeder 4 of the of the distribution system in this figure, has a system peak demand of 3000 kVA per phase, and a copper loss of 0.5% at the system peak. And let's determine the followings. The copper loss of the feeder in kilowatts per phase. And, the total copper losses of the feeder, in kilowatts per three phases. We start by finding the copper loss of the feeder at peak load, in kilowatts per phase, which is 0.5% of the system peak. That is, in this case, equal to 0.5% times, the per phase system peak. Therefore, the per phase kilowatt copper loss of the feeder, at system peak, is 15 kilowatts per phase. So, the average total copper loss of the feeder is 15 kilowatts per phase times the loss factor of 0.2, that equals 3 kilowatts per phase. The total average copper losses of the feeder, in kilowatts per three phases, are therefore equal to, 3 times the average per phase losses, and are hence equal to 9 kilowatts. To summarize the definitions part of this first chapter, we can say that Diversity factors are used by utilities, for distribution transformer sizing, and load predictions. Commonly used with loads, that are different among each other. Demand factors are more conservative, 
and are used by some standards for service and feeder sizing. Demand and diversity factors are both used in power distribution system analysis and development. Load factor is calculated after system is being designed, and is in operation, and is used for determining the overall cost per unit generated. While, load factor indicates, how efficiently the customer is using peak demand. This is the end of this section, in which we have covered several definitions of factors that characterize the load and can help in conducting a load study, as will be seen in the next section of this chapter about load characteristics.